I uh, am going to attempt to make a fretless guitar. I pulled the frets out of this guitar before and tried it with the existing strings and it totally worked. So when I say I'm going to attempt, I, I, I am. Uh, I pulled the frets out and I found a, a gift card that was the, just the right thickness to slide in in white when you cut it the inside is white so it's going to have fret lines but I needed something to fill in because when I played there would be um, with the existing strings on it which weren't the greatest but not only could I feel the little um, slot but it had a little bit of like a you know Every time it, it hit the little slot, I know, isn't that a great sound effect? Uh, so, filled in the slots with uh, just some tight bond glue. Uh, they're fairly held in. They're, there's a, a pretty decent tight fit, uh, but the tight bond is just going to hold them in. So now all I'm going to do, uh, oh, and I used the end of this here, a little sharp corner, to just sort of scrape the slots. There was no glue or anything in there, but uh, made sure that they were all clean and everything before I put the pieces in. And uh, I don't know. Can you tell what uh, gift card I used? The blue and yellow and black logo. Uh, Best Buy. But anyway. So there we are. So now I'm just going to trim the ends and uh, cut the height on them, as you can see. Uh, trim them down with like an X-Acto knife or a uh, razor blade scraper or something. But uh, that's the next step. Okay, I took a razor blade, used uh, the little fret protector things and shaved off a whole lot of the plastic so I don't know if you can see yeah you can see there it shaved off a bunch uh, unfortunately in a couple of spots the razor blade actually sort of cut down and lifted pieces out so I super glued them back in uh, it seems that the tight bond isn't the best glue for the plastic. It works great for wood though, but anyway, so that's what I did. And now I'm going to uh, sand it down smooth. These dots are painted on, so probably going to lift those off with the sanding, but what are you going to do? I'll maybe paint them back on. But anyway, uh, that's the next step, so stay tuned. It was a little bit of a pain, uh, huh, a pain in the neck to do this. Uh, definitely, rather than shaving this down with uh, a razor blade or something, sanding it was the way to go. It uh, just pretty much came right off with sandpaper and a sanding block. So I sanded the fretboard a bunch. Uh, the radius on it is flat, so that was easy. I just used a block and then uh, a bunch of uh, white bond varnish. And uh, the biggest thing was filling some dings and divots and stuff. Oh, and by the way, these uh, were actually inlays. So it's nice. I didn't have to repaint them or anything. But uh, sanded it down a bunch, put a bunch of coats of finish, uh, some kind of drop fills for some of the dings, sanded it again, a couple more coats of finish, sanded it again, a couple more coats. It took like five or six days. So here we are. I'm going to string it up and uh, we'll hear it. So I strung it up, put uh, these babies on it. Thomas Stick Infeld 
Vienna swing flat wound 12 gauge uh, swing series it seems I don't know I just figured flat wound would be the way to go <coughs> and uh, it's about uh, look at how the I'm looking in the little uh, LCD screen <coughs> excuse me for the video and you can see the light reflecting off of the very smooth fretboard. Uh, but anyway, here's how it sounds. Uh, it'll definitely take some getting used to. And, <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, It's not very loud, especially on like some of the higher strings. But uh, I think throwing a uh, some sort of a pickup into this and running it into uh, an amplifier maybe with a little bit of gain, some compression maybe, will kind of uh, pull everything together sustain-wise. But that's what we got. <clears throat> I am not totally convinced that it's awesome, but it's kind of neat. Kind of weird. <laughs>